All right, in this video, we're going to answer the question here, and I'm reading. It says, here is the data for a large sample of fish. Their weights in grams have been recorded, and the data is summarized in a relative frequency distribution table. So relative frequencies tell you what percentage fell into each category and below, or, or for each weight. So for instance, um, actually just within each category. So for the category of 56 grams, there were 3% of the total sample uh, that fell into that weight or that had the, that weight measurement. So 3% of the total sample size, whatever that may be. So let's say if it was 100 and here it says it was 100, okay. So if it was 100, 3% of 100 is 3. So 3% of the fish had a weight of 56 grams. So in other words, just because it's 100, if you do, if you do, um, let's do a quick calculation just to show you, if you have 100 fish times 3%, which as a decimal is 0 0.03, that's 3, right? Now, if you had a different sample size, let's say you had um, 50, or let's try 60, um, 60 as your sample size, and you multiply that times 0.3, you would have a different number. Right, so for this one, just because it's 100 fish, it makes it really easy, um, since there's 100 numbers in the data set, to know that, okay, so three fish had a weight of 56 grams, two fish had a weight of 57 grams, and so on. And it says, from this relative frequency distribution table, or FDT for short, obtain the five number summary. Now, the five number summary is what we make box plots with. We take the smallest value in the data set called the minimum, um, and the maximum, and the median, which is the value right in the center when you lay them out in order. And then the first quartile um, is the divider for the lower 25% of the data, and the third quartile is the divider for the lower 75%, so the lower three quarters of the data. So what we can do to answer this question is take our data, and that's not what I wanted to do. If that ever happens to you, just make sure you're not inside the box, the cell. Okay, if your cursor is inside the cell and you try to paste a table, it's going to paste the whole table right into that cell and then you'll see something really weird like this. And I'm just going to do Control Z to undo. And I'm going to try that again, uh, just making sure that my cursor is not inside the cell. Okay, good. Now, um, the reason I wanted to do this is so that I could... Um, lay these out in order if they're not already in order that's one thing you may need to do but these happen to be already in order from least to greatest so that's helpful now um, to find the minimum that's pretty easy that's 56 right the smallest weight in the data set then the largest is pretty easy since they're already in order 68 grams for the, is the largest fish weight and then the median would be the divider right in the center now, since we have um, a total of 100 fish, then we want to know where the divider is between the smaller or um, lesser, what is it, lighter, the least heavy fish, the 50 least heavy fish, half of the sample. Um, where's the divider between those fish and the 50 heaviest fish? So we want to try to figure out, okay, these are fish weights, okay, but it's not just one fish that has a weight of 56 grams and one fish that has a weight of 57 grams. Since it's 3%, and I actually know that, you know, taking 100 times, um, times the frequency, I mean to say my relative frequency, gives me the number of fish in each category. And like I said, since it's a sample of 100, it's a direct, it's pretty simple. It's not always that simple. Um, and this question was most likely designed to be a little easier with a, hundred, with a sample size of 100, but I digress. Um, so now you see the frequency. I have three fish that had a weight of 56 grams. So one way of looking at this is to say, okay, I have 56 for three fish, 56 grams for three fish. And then I have 57 grams for two fish, right? So, you know, and you could do the whole 100 fish out like this, which is something you don't really want to have to do. So I'm going to show you a better way, but I just wanted you to get an idea of um, how you can, you know, understand 
how this might work out. So if you had all of the fish's weights, all 50 of the fish's weights laid out, all 100 of them from least to greatest, then you could figure out where the middle was. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to add up these relative frequency until we get to 50%. Or another way of looking at it is add up the number of fish until we get to 50 fish. And then whatever that weight is and the next weight is going to be the divider. All right, so, or it could be, um, well, you'll see, let me, let me demonstrate. So let's just add up, um, real quick, I'm going to clear this out. We're going to add up using the sum function all of the frequencies, okay? Um, and just see that it's 100, okay? Now, what if we just sum up until we get to 50? So like, let me see right here. Is that 50? No, not yet, okay? So I'm gonna click up into my formula bar and I'm going to extend. So I was at 34, that'll be 40. So here, where am I? Okay, so when I am right here at 63 grams, I have, 52%, right? So I've gone past the halfway mark when I get to this row. So then the halfway mark was right here um, at 62 grams. So that would be the median, also known as the 50th. Oops, well, I got it wrong. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah, no, it should be. If I go back. <laughs> Okay, while I figure this out. I'm going to pause while I think it out. Okay, I just had to think a little bit more clearly. Um, so I'm actually going to do a cumulative frequency so that you can see how this makes sense. So cumulative, what does that mean? That means it adds up as you go, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up. Um, so I'll start with the 3%. And then in the next one, I'm going to add up these two and you can see that i have a total of five percent for this row maximum like all these fish down here that's five my lower five percent of the fish and if i keep doing this and i'll pause while i well actually no i'll just let you see it that way you can follow along right so i'm just doing the cumulative frequency here for each row so that i can see when i get um to 50 percent or greater I don't want to go past 50%, um, but I might need to, and that's what happened with this problem, so you'll see what I mean in a sec. All right, so that was um, right here, row eight. This is the 40, these fish down here, that's my 40 lightest fish, the fish with the lowest weights, the 40 fish with the lowest weights out of the 100. And so I haven't made it all the way to 50%. That's why 62 is not the right answer. Even though when I get to the next one, the next row, and get all my frequencies added up, now I'm at 52. But it's because the 50th fish and the 51st fish were both 63 pounds, or 30, excuse me, 63 grams. 63 pounds would be pretty crazy. Uh, but uh, although some fish are 63 pounds and greater. Um, so the answer is that um, if I laid out all these weights, as I was showing you before, until I got to 50 fish, then my 50th fish and my 51st fish would be 63 um, pounds. And so, <laughs> I said it again, I meant to say 63 grams, and so that would be the divider for the lower 50%. Okay, and then we're going to do the same idea for the quartiles, except for instead of going halfway, we want to go to a quarter. So as you can see right here, when we get to this row, we have 25, 24% uh, of the fish accounted for. And then in the next row, the seventh row, we get to 34. So that means that in this row is the 25th fish or the 25% marker. So then the answer should be 61 here. And for the third quartile, that would be 75% of the data. So what we wanna do is continue to accumulate our relative frequencies here until we get to at least 75. So just going through okay, a little bit further. This should be it. Okay, so here were 73% of the fish accounted for, and then here 
uh, um, we get to 78%. So between here and here was our 75th fish, right? Or 75% marker. So 66 grams would be the answer for that one. Okay. So I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.